Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. And this will be part 352. We're, <clears throat> we're entering into a lesson titled, After the Fall of Kingdoms. Events that are going to take place, <clears throat> commensuring with the proclamation of the judgment and events <clears throat> leading up to the culmination of the gathering. Scripture indicates the judgment will result in the destruction of all the current countries of the earth. Jeremiah 25 verse 26. <clears throat> <clears throat> Jeremiah 25, 26. Yeah. And all kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world which are upon the face of the earth. And the king of Shishak shall drink after them. So, <clears throat> the scripture is giving us the understanding <clears throat> that everything dealing with this current order is going to be wiped out <clears throat> with the exception of those things that the Father sovereignly will preserve. Turn to Jeremiah 4, verse 26. <clears throat> I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness. So he's talking about every, every place on the earth that had formerly flourished, formerly been fertile, is going to experience ruin. Jeremiah looks at the whole world and it looks like a desolation. I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof <clears throat> were broken down at the presence of the Lord by his fierce anger. So the rage of the judgment <clears throat> is going to fall on all the former industrious, prosperous regions that constituted. <clears throat> the Adamic order and totally eradicate it, deface it, uh, render it uh, <clears throat> totally destructed, destroyed, incapable of producing anything. Now, Scripture gives us the understanding there are going to be exceptions. Within these destroyed regions, God will preserve places where His Sheep can be found. Matthew twenty four forty five. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Mm. Just amazing. I'm praising the Lord. <laughs> Amen. For seeing these <clears throat> truths. Praise God, yes. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Due season. <clears throat> this is the time in which the individual who has been called from eternity is going to be called forth to perform that which he has been <clears throat> called to do. Feed God's sheep. 
Well, he can't do that in a ruined environment. He can't do that while he's trying to survive in an area which does not support life. The Father doesn't call you to do something you can't do. The Father calls you to do something he's prepared you to do. Mm. <clears throat> so in that context, we find that <clears throat> there will be places prepared for his people. Now, when you say places, mm -hmm. what image should we conjure up in our minds? What would these places look like? The places that you see right now. Okay. That are going to be preserved. Churches. Not necessarily churches. Buildings, structures, okay. centers. I've had dreams of us going into um, <coughs> buildings that are lit up, that have uh, electricity, facilities, um, <coughs> places of um, rest and recreation, bedrooms, that sort of thing. The Father's going to preserve that. For the, the, the elitists today are being used by God to preserve right. those places that right. God's going to use for his people. Interesting. The way he works. <clears throat> Which brings us to the next principle. The Holy Spirit is going to move on these teachers. Scripture teaches these instructors will all know that he, the Lord, will appear to gather his people after the judgment. Turn Ephesians, first chapter, verse 9 to 10. <clears throat> Having made known unto his unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he had purposed in himself. So the Holy Spirit will make known to the teacher God's purpose, God's plan, God's schedule. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So, <clears throat> the teacher's going to know because the Holy Spirit, when this thing goes south, is going to be the driving force of the teachers. Those prototokos who we will call the first generation, they've passed already, of course, who are in the heavens. Mm -hmm. At what point are they released to <clears throat> teach and who will they be teaching? When the Lord, um, Psalms 50, okay, you have my saints okay. to me, they're going to be part of the teaching group that's already on the earth. Remember, the heavens and the earth are now connected. I was... Oh, yes, of course. I was focusing on the graduation of the teacher at the beginning of Cyrus. Mm. But that's the this connection. Is, this is before that. The graduation takes place at the culmination of the gathering when you come into your inheritance. Before that, you're going to be given the people you got to teach. We're talking about the ones in the heavens. The ones in the heavens are going to connect with the ones on earth mm -hmm. as the Lord descends to <clears throat> gather his people. Mm -hmm. The connection is solidified. Remember, look, look at this way. Ephesians, the first chapter. Having made known unto us, verse 9, the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things. <clears throat> the prototokos from 2,000 years ago, yes. prototokos from now, mm -hmm together in Christ <coughs> both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him okay. they were called to do <coughs> what we're called to do at the same time right. that's why access crosses for everybody so we're understanding that the first generation who are in the heavens right now who you've eloquently pointed out will be connected <laughs> 
they're going to be teaching at the beginning of Cyrus. Yes. They're teaching, they're teaching those who are on the earth. Yes. Because they are... The elevation hasn't happened yet. Doesn't have to. The heavens are connected. Ele the, the God's people have to be fed. You're going to have... One second. You're going to have a unique group in the heavens and on the earth that are designated from eternity to feed them. <coughs> They're in heaven right now, yes? Yes. Okay, who taught them? <coughs> are they completely taught? Well, they don't need to be taught anymore? The teachers. They've already gone. 2,000 years ago, they qualified for what we're qualifying for now. So, Paul, yeah. Apollos, Silas, all those that went through their stuff. And were doing their teaching. Are, we're prepared for what's going to take right. place now. Right. <clears throat> Did they receive an upgrade in understanding and knowledge when they changed from mortal to immortal? No. <clears throat> they received what we receive, the Holy Spirit. They're advanced over us right yeah, now. Right. Because they're in the heavens. We haven't qualified like they've qualified. Okay. But we're all going to experience the new reality. Yes. In the heavens and on the earth. Yes. So back to his question. Mm -hmm. At that point, will they qualify? They've already qualified. Well, sorry, will they be, excuse me. Will they be upgraded? That's one. And the answer has to be yes, because we're all Yeah, well, upgraded. everybody's right. going to be on the, right. the same, right. if you want to use that word, upgraded level. But back to who will they be teaching before the Lord comes back to distribute his rewards? They don't teach until the X, Y axis crosses. What's the X, Y axis? The judgment. Okay. That so opens then, the door. We're back to the same thing. Because, the beginning of sorrows. Yeah. I, I need my question answered. I'm sorry. I <laughs> know. Who will they be teaching? How will they be doing the teaching? And will we know it at the beginning of sorrows? The same way you teach. Mm -hmm. The same people you're teaching. The elder group that's now in captivity that are going to be released by the beginning of sorrows and enter into a new reality. I'm understanding you to mean that the teachers collectively teach. Yes. Yes. So, just for example, okay. over one church or one group, no, I can't say over one church because it's not quite there yet. Over one particular group, one Matthew 24, 45 teacher in the flesh on the earth is teaching collectively with those in the heavens as a group that which they're over. They're not going to be in the heavens. Who's not going to be in the heavens? The, 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 the prototokis. Everybody comes to They're earth. dead. They're the first generation we're talking about. Yes. Okay. Yes. Remember, the heavens and the earth are connected. Correct. Everybody has to progress the same way. Okay. Paul's going to be a star over the church. Right. Apollo's uh, probably too. Okay. You, you. The scripture's telling us the heavens and the earth are now connected. Agreed, but we so haven't different. got we haven't got to that stage where there are star over the churches yet. No. We're at the stage at the beginning of the very first yes. day, the beginning of sorrow. Everybody right. enters into <coughs> his calling mm. at the same time. So if we are teaching various groups, just for example, will will be, will we be helped by the first generation who are in the heavens at the beginning of sorrows in our teaching uh, process? No, because you're going to be on the same level with them. Everybody's going to be taught by the Holy Spirit, moved by the Holy okay, Spirit. Okay, so then they're not taught at that point. At they the don't need to be. They have everything they need. So when you, They got theirs 2,000 years ago. So when you're talking about them teaching, you really mean when they're stars over the churches? No. <clears throat> Turn to Psalms 50. Okay. Turn to Psalms 50. I'll try to hang on to what I'm trying to ask. You've got to squeeze this out, Richard. <laughs> Every drop of comprehension is no necessary. Problem. Right. This is going to be part of the lesson anyway. Okay. Psalms 50, verse 2 to 3. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come, and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. I'm talking about his glory. He shall call, he shall call, he shall call to the heavens. Not the earth yet. To 
the heavens. What is he calling? He called to the heaven from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Okay. The prototokers 2,000 years ago right. are in the heavens. Agreed. The Lord makes his pronouncement, mm -hmm. judgment. This thing collapses. He then later on descends. As he descends, calls to the heavens. All those that have made a sacrifice with me, <coughs> covenant me by sacrifice, gather to me. The same thing that happens when later on in the rapture is going to happen here. Only difference, they're not glorified yet. Okay, I agree with everything you're saying, obviously. What happens, well, no, let me rephrase that, between the judgment being called and the Lord descending, that period only, what are the first generation who are in the heavens doing? Waiting. Okay, so then they're not teaching. They, they never were. I understood you to mean that they were helping those, uh, those protagonist teachers on the earth to teach. No. That's what it sounded like to me, okay. No. Because they haven't come into the inheritance yet. The ones on the, on the ground. None of them. They're in their heavenly father's estate waiting for this. This being the <coughs> elevation. Yeah. What you're thinking about. This being the elevation. Yeah. The right. teaching part you're talking about, when yeah. we look at Daniel, right. you have the saint talking about this. Yes. The angel, that takes place after the saint comes okay. into his inheritance. Okay. Jesus makes him rule over all his goods. Right. Yes, sir. Okay, he's asked it, but I didn't. I can't remember because I had to help try to hold on to this question. What are the ones that are in heaven right now? Gather my sense together. The ones that are in heaven right now. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? <clears throat> turn to First Peter. I'm going to answer your question. Turn to First Peter, first chapter, because it's leading to some other stuff. And I would like to have an opportunity to, to ask you, Mr. Jones, so please, you know, don't try to make me re try to remember it again because I, I will lose it. Well, what I'm trying to do is not to give you my answer. I'm trying to give you the scripture. Amen. That's all we're willing that, to accept. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Where are we going? First Peter, first chapter. <laughs> verse 3 to 4. We want truth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to which verse we First Peter, three. first chapter, three to four. Blessed be the God and Father, Father, O Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Two thousand years ago, <clears throat> when the Prototokos passed this life, Paul Silas, Apollos, this is where they went to the estate in the Father. This is where they currently are, the Father's estate, waiting for Psalms 50 to take place. Okay. The first generation, would you, would you describe them as having taught elders at that time? No. Because there were no elders, were there? <laughs> right. So they don't get to teach those who we get to teach. They're going to teach the same ones we're teaching. That's why the Lord's calling them from the heaven. Look, the I'm only talking about a specific period of time. I am Beginning too. of sorrows to the end of the gathering. Purely yes, that period. I am too. Okay. Look, the, the <clears throat> teachers are a very small group. Those to be taught, very large group. How many teachers do you think you have living here on the earth now? Sure, a handful maybe. Yeah, okay. How many do you need to teach 
You have redeemed us from every kindred and right. tongue and many, people and many. nation. Yes. We have to understand, when I say the change is going to take place, you're entering into a new reality. Forget this. This is wiped out. Human thinking crashed and burned. You're looking at a new dispensation, new things taking place. You're going to come into your own. You're going to come into your own. You're going to be operating radically different than you are now because you've been designed to operate from a heavenly perspective just like them. So what has, what's coming to me right now is that the things that you're trying to get him to say, you, you look, you have all these questions. How does this and this and this, with all the, th all the things that you've given me, how does it all fit in with this little section? This, and, and so you're forcing him into giving an explanation, which, which I'm sitting here wondering, what's, okay, what's the first question that got him to this place? So the whole thing is, I'm, the father's saying, you're going to know. You're going to know when you get in your position, you're going to know what to do, what to say. You're going to already know because it's it's my will that you do know so that you can do what of I've course. made you to I do. That. So the whole thing is, you <clears throat> see, I am more worried than you are about you know getting all the pieces together, getting, getting it all together so that I can teach it the same way. Well, I'm remembering that I'm human now and I have no ability to remember anything because I have to consistently have this guy tell, teach me over and over and over and get frustrated with him because he won't raise, he won't answer my hand raised. But see, that here I am focusing on the little things that the Father knows I'm worried about, I'm concerned about. He's telling me, don't worry about it. Stop, stop doing that worrying thing and just keep trusting me and you're going to get there, you're going to you're gonna please me and you're going to be happy that you shut up and Put on your big boy pants. <laughs> Let me give you this. It wasn't on the, the list. Turn to Romans 8. <laughs> it might clear up a little more. <clears throat> Romans 8, 16 to 17. Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. The prototokens have qualified for the inheritance. As of yet, we are have not. We're progressing toward that. They enter into their inheritance in the Father state waiting for the second the joint inheritance with Christ when does that happen at the gathering turn to Ephesians first chapter <clears throat> verse 9 to 11. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will. So this is the way the fathers laid it all out. And he lets the sons know. This is the way it's going to be done. According to his good pleasure which he had purposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times. He might gather together in one all things. In Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Even in him. So those in heaven, those on earth going to be gathered together in unity. <clears throat> Why? Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. <clears throat> Those that have qualified are in their inheritance in the Father. They haven't gotten the joint inheritance yet. We haven't even gotten the inheritance in the Father yet. <laughs> At the gathering, everything culminates. <clears throat> the teachers who have qualified 
all gathered together. After the gathering, everybody gets their joint inheritance. Matthew 24. <clears throat> Verse 45, 46, actually 45 to 47. <clears throat> A million passages of scripture. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Hath made ruler over his household. Everybody got their marching orders at the same time. Paul, Silas, Apollos, you, me, him. We all got it at the same time to be made <coughs> a feeder of God's sheep. <coughs> it happens at the same time. <laughs> Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, he shall make him ruler over all his goods. What does that mean? When he comes back, he's going to find Brace feeding his sheep. He's going to find you feeding his sheep. He's going to find Paul feeding his sheep. Apollos feeding his sheep. Everybody comes into the joint inheritance at the same time. They aren't rulers over his household yet because they haven't come into inheritance. Neither are we. We're all qualifying for it here in this life. They've already qualified for right. it. <clears throat> so let's continue. <clears throat> because we see how it's going to be broken down. We said, <clears throat> Scripture teaches the instructors will all know that he's going to appear to gather his people after the judgment. We just read Ephesians, the first chapter, 9 to 10. Having made known to us the mystery of his will. Full of time, he's going to gather his people. Scripture teaches some will try to take advantage of this knowledge to benefit themselves. Matthew 24, 48 to 51. But, and if that evil servant <clears throat> shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. So this guy knows the Lord's coming back. Judgment's taking place. He's got his marching orders. He knows what he's supposed to be doing. The whole group is one unified, uh, uh, one unified body from the time of the judgment. Everybody is in the place where they're open to teach now. There's no restrict. You don't have to worry about driving or doing anything. We're all together. <clears throat> the people we're supposed to teach have been given to us. We're teaching. This is where you get the division. This guy calculates in his own mind. Yeah, well, the Lord's going to be coming. I know what I should be doing. But I can do this. Still have enough time by the time he gets here to make it look good. Who thinks <clears throat> like that, Mr. Jones? <laughs> Somebody under the Luciferian influence. <laughs> verse 50, <clears throat> verse 45. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him in an hour that he's not aware of. And shall cut him asunder, appoint him his portion. With the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of feet. Instead of him getting his inheritance, he gets judgment. Everybody else <coughs> gets to join inheritance in Christ. This guy gets to be a denizen of the torment regions of hell. But let's go on. We want to take a look at what I, what I consider to be very important. The Lord's view 
of all of this. Scripture indicates the Lord will appear to gather and lead his people to their prepared communities. Now this is the Lord's plan from 2,000 years ago. John 10th chapter, verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. The Lord is talking about something he himself is going to do. It's repeated. Uh, <clears throat> turn to John... John 11 <coughs> verse 51 to 52 High priest makes a prophecy. The Bible talks about this prophecy. 51. And this, thus spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. What nation? Israel. And not for that nation only, but that also he, 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 the Lord, should gather, gather, gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Prototokos, elders, and all the rest of the world. He is going to do it personally. When? Shortly after the judgment. How do you know? Because everybody knows he's coming back to do just that. The evil servant says, I got more time. He won't be coming back until. <laughs> so I can do this. <laughs> Wrong. It's indictment on the human race, Mr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Scripture indicates, first, he will appear in his glory to all the world. We just read that in Psalms 50. Now turn to Luke 21. 25 to 27. This takes place shortly after the judgment. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity to see in the waves roaring. In other words, Things are going to be progressing. The Luciferian Fourth Empire is here. Carved up the world. Done their thing. And then the Lord is going to enter into this domain. This is the beginning of the pre prelude to it. The creation is going to go into upheavals. Then, verse 26. Men's hearts failing. Then for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth... For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. This is Psalms 50, verse 2 to 3. As he descends, coming in the power of his might and his glory, he speaks to the heavens. <coughs> Gather unto me my saints that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. It's only the heavens, that's only the earth at that point. <clears throat> the earth will be <clears throat> gathered by him. He doesn't have to pronounce it. He's talking to the saints in the heavens, in their estates, waiting for him. <clears throat> they gather to him, they come down. 
what happens. <clears throat> Scripture indicates he will then gather the faithful teachers to his presence to reward them with their inheritance. Luke 17. Starting in verse 30. Again, he's talking about a world that has settled in under the fourth empire to a routine that's going to suddenly experience radical disruption. <clears throat> Luke 17, starting in verse 30. Even though shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which is upon the housetop and the stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. <clears throat> he does in the field, let him likewise not return back. He's talking about the people <clears throat> that are, <clears throat> just like in the first judgment, caught off guard, not doing what they're supposed to do. He's advising them what they should do. Get out of Dodge because the structure is going to overtake them. <clears throat> Verse 32. Remember Lot's wife. 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you in that night there shall be two in one bed. The one shall be taken. The other left. Two shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken. The other left. Two shall be in the field, and one shall be taken, the other left. They answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? He said unto them, Whithersoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. What is he referring to? Who are the eagles? The eagles are the teachers. Mm -hmm. Where are they taken? They're taken to the community. <clears throat> They're going to receive their inheritance as rulers over. This whole household. So that's the elevation. Yeah. That's Matthew 24. 47. 47. Yeah. I'll make them ruler over all his stuff. When? When he returns. Finds that person so doing what he's supposed to do. He's going to get his inheritance. The guy who wasn't, who's on the rooftop with his stuff, get on a dime. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. <clears throat> okay, so, Will, at that point... Of the gathering, I, you're talking about the gathering, yes? Okay, so now, there's going to be a reality change, a shift. We are going to be very well anticipating and, and appreciative of it. Those that we are going to teach, are they going to immediately understand what's going on? No. Of course not. So, you know, so that's going to be a reality shift for them as well. Sure. They're going to be in a supernatural existence, unlike they are currently right now. Yes. That's, that's where the teachers come in. That's why he's so dependent on the teachers. They have to be brought into an understanding of what's going on. Mm. Look, they just come out of religion, sure. Islam, sure. Uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, uh, organized religion. How are they going to know what's taking place? Only one way, through the spirit-filled teacher who already knows and has been authorized from eternity to feed them right now because they're prepared, be prepared for eternity. Yes. Okay. Do you remember Vin Tran? Yeah. Okay. Vin Tran, I told you guys this story before. I'm going to say it again because I want Mariko and Georgia to hear this. I worked with this guy. What's that? <laughs> I mean, Marty. <laughs> who, he might, he might who, are, who are those people that are looking at me and laughing at me? Okay, so now listen. This guy that I worked with for 10 years up to this point, he decides to buy himself a new vacuum cleaner, and he gives me his old vacuum cleaner. I'm like, okay, well, gee, thanks. Um, but, you know, it doesn't work. He says, well, fix it. 
So he is, he's been watching me for 10 years. He's seen what I'm doing. There's no doubt in his mind that I cannot fix it. He's, giving, he's not giving me trash. He's going to fix it. And I'm like, he is so confident that I can do it. I did it. I did it. And I was so <laughs> thankful for him. I, 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 I was stretched because I saw in his eyes, he knew I could do it. I just wasn't confident I could do it. But the, I went through the situation. It's just like the father. He's going to put us in situations that will we trust him. He's given us an opportunity. He's planned it. He, you know, so... What do we do? We break free from the limitations of the human thinking and step into the big boy pants. Once again. Uh, what's that? Once again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen.